living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh-huh. Andy? Yeah! Bert? Well, all right, fellas. Let's go! You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader. Want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday, 4th day of February, 2019. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you had an opportunity to spend some quality time with the family. So glad you could join us here today. If you are at your desktop, you should be able to see the charts I have up. S&P 500 E-mini futures. If you can't see the chart, go to our homepage at cfrn.net on the right hand side side of the page click the big microphone follow the instructions it takes about 30 seconds and then you can see the charts participate in the discussion access the chat box get all the help you need away from the desktop go to youtube.com slash cfrn slash live on your smartphone tablet that's youtube.com slash cfrn slash live and there you have it. We do a simulcast each and every day. And thanks to the folks at YouTube for carrying the show. Oh, 
Time for a tune-up. <clears throat> okay. Jack Dorsey. You may have heard of him. CEO of Twitter and mobile payment platform Square. Recently went on the wildly popular Joe Rogan Experience podcast to talk about his various ventures. Among the topics that came up was cryptocurrency, a recurring theme on the show. Dorsey explained he believes that the internet will have a native currency and he thinks it will be Bitcoin because of the principles behind it <clears throat> and its origin. It was something that was born on the internet, was developed on the internet, tested on the internet. It is of the internet, according to Jack Dorsey. Square CEO <clears throat> touched on the issue of functionality for payments versus store of wealth or store of value. He said, we would love to see something become a global currency. It enables more access. It allows us to serve more people. It allows us to move much faster around the world, he explained. He continues, we thought we were going to start with how you can use it transactionally, but we noticed that people were treating it more like an asset, like a virtual gold, and we just wanted to make sure that was easy. We wanted to make sure we had just the simplest way to buy and sell Bitcoin. Dorsey also mentioned that the current banking and political systems are threatened by the invention as no one has no centralized control over Bitcoin. That's <clears throat> very true. There's no central office. There's no one server. There's no boss, not even a guy with a clipboard. Hmm. Jack says it's certainly threatening to certain services behind banks and financial institutions. It's even threatening to some governments as well. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Cryptocurrency exchange Bitstamp <clears throat> launched a new mobile app for iOS and Android last week on Thursday. The app allows users to buy and sell cryptocurrencies make transfers, check balances and transaction history, and explore the markets through real-time charts. Additional features include a simple interface for beginners and another one for experienced traders, the ability to issue instant market limit and stop orders, as well as an option to remotely disable the app in case a user's phone is lost or stolen. Now, the team behind the development of the app said that it is built from the ground up to combine all the tools that make Bitstamp attractive for advanced traders in an intuitive interface, simple enough that anyone can begin trading in seconds. We suggest all users switch to the new app immediately for improved performance, reliability, and more features. The old Bitstamp app will be disabled after a one month crossover period. NVIDIA, could the impact of the crypto winner have been harder on NVIDIA? Well, this is what a recent report claims. RBC analyst Mitch Stevens estimates that the company controls three quarters of the GPU mining market and calculated it made a fortune for miners during the boom time, a revenue stream that is now lost. Now, according to Market Insider, notes from Steve's, we think NVIDIA generated $1.95 billion in total revenue related to crypto and blockchain. This compares to the company's statement that it generated around $602 million over the same time period. Last week, the company updated investors that its previous fourth quarter guidance had embedded a sequential decline due to excess mid-range channel inventory following the cryptocurrency boom. The company claimed that the reduction in that inventory and its impact on the business have proceeded largely in line with management's expectations and that it was deteriorating macroeconomic conditions, particularly in China, that weakened consumer demand for gaming GPUs. Crypto or games? Why is it a secret? I don't know. 
Venezuela. <clears throat> now somebody out there is going to go, but it's Venezuela. Well, that's okay. <clears throat> it's a government, and here's what's happening. Their new cryptocurrency rules have entered into force. It's very officious. In the, in the Gaceta Oficial, Venezuela's constituent decree on the integral system of crypto assets has been published in the country's official gazette. The decree establishing the legal framework for cryptocurrencies and all related activities contains 63 articles. It entered into force with the publication in the gazette. The 63 articles are grouped into six sections. The first section comprises articles one through five, which outline general information about the decree including its objectives and scope of application. It also defines blockchain, digital mining, crypto asset, sovereign crypto asset, cryptography, user, and public price. The scope of the application of this constituent degree covers all goods, services, values, or activities related to the constitution, issuance, organization, operation and use of the national crypto assets and other crypto assets within the national territory as well as the purchase sale use distribution and exchange of any product or service derived from them or other activities that are connected right <clears throat> soon read up on it because you'll be hearing a whole lot more about it let's take a look at the numbers from around the world real quick on this overcast rainy monday <clears throat> there should be a song oh wait there is alexa alexa play rainy days and mondays <clears throat> I was thinking Monday, Monday is what we is what you're gonna play. Monday, Monday. Da, 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 da. Alexa, stop. Yep, little rainy days and Mondays. All right, <clears throat> here are the numbers. These are cash markets from around the world, and. Come on, mouse. Hey, Mouseketeers. All right, the Dow is up 20 points. NASDAQ is up 64. S&P 500 up 7. And the Russell 2000 up 9. In the commodity basket, crude oil down 99 cents. Natural, uh, gold down $2.70, trading 13.19.40 last. At 1300 so far so good. In the Asian markets, at the close, the Nikkei was up 95 points. Shanghai was up 33. And the Hang Seng up 59. Are you starting to notice these numbers? They're coming down. There's not as much volatility, not as much daily range. I'm not saying it's gone, I'm just saying it's not present the story continues in europe with the FTSE at the close up 14 points the dax down four and the cac down 19. so that makes it a green day in asia with small numbers with a tight range a mixed day against the same backdrop in europe and here at home green but more of the same no big numbers nothing to get excited about we are approaching friday's swing high which was 27.16 and our swing high so far is 27.13.50 now we were looking on the cta last night concierge trade alerts we're looking at 
Was it 2709? I think it was. Yeah. 2709. Consider being long above 2709. At or above. And there's 27. The, the swing high of this candle was exactly 2709. Alright. There. That's a little above it. 2709. Close enough. Uh, gotta be away. Here, that'll do it. Alright. <clears throat> so, touched it. Important price, important area. Almost always tested. You can look right across here. Just like that. Back up, get a running start. Made it through. All of this is from Friday, and I'm getting ready to make it go away. I just left it here because I, I, let, I try my best to leave the screen where it was the day before on the show just as a point of continuity. Okay? Get that? Okay. Now, tomorrow, there is... Yes, that was the Carpenters. Thank you, Joseph. I don't think I had the volume up loud enough. <clears throat> Um, tomorrow, there will be, and it's in the chat box over on the side, there will be a Q&A session for everyone who is on the Logic 247 trial. I'm pretty sure you guys can all see it where it is. There it is again. I okay, yeah. I couldn't see it in the other one. You couldn't? I sent no. it to everyone. Well, now I can see it. But, um, oh, and, oh, and this one. I see which other one. I'm sorry, yeah. Justin. You had a question? Oh, he said your volume has gone down. But <laughs> Justin, uh, it gone, hasn't gone, gone down, down for me. Gone down from where? Oh, okay. All right. It hasn't gone up for me. It's been steady. For me. Okay. Okay. All right. We have covered uh, <clears throat> everything that I need to cover right now. These are last week zones, and they will be on any chart where you see the zones there last week. If you're on the trial, I did post the zones uh, in the trial channel this morning. You're welcome to join us on the trial. <clears throat> and if you would like to do that, just send an email to support at cfrn.net. Valerie will send you out the link to the alert channel, to the trial alert channel, uh, to the discussion group that goes along with that, <clears throat> and any other links that you may or may not need. We'll get them all out to you. Okay, Michael, you ready? I am ready. Take it away. Okay. Okay, I'll be here when right. you're done. Excellent. Okay, here we go, guys. Um, yeah. All right. Good, <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today is Monday, the fourth day of February, 2019. Um, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you'll read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today we made 15 ticks in crude, we lost 7 ticks in gold, and we made 2 ticks on the ES. That got us to $105 per contract. Um, today it took 104 minutes and 7 trades to get to 105, and we took a total of 7 trades. So on a month now, we're at $305, that's over 2 days, excuse me, averaging $152 a day. And on the year, we're at $2,336, that's over 21 days, averaging $111 per day. Okay. Now, to keep things into perspective, that is one contract, two hours per day. One contract, two hours per day. Um, if you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to take a free trial with us, go to the home page here at CFRN.net. Over here in the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial, apply.CFRN.net. If you click on that, you will be brought to this page, where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Hit the submit button and you'll be sent a confirmation link. 
you must click on the confirmation link, okay? If you don't click the confirmation link, we don't know that you took the free trial. So you gotta click on that link. All right, so let's take a look at what happened. Now, we started out the day here in gold and we stopped out on our first trade. It lasted forever and we ended up stopping out on it. And you know, what we anticipate when you get into a trade is that the green line down here is gonna work its way up into the cycle. And when it does, you'll have a higher swing in place. Well, it did eventually work its way up into the cycle, but you know, we're only gonna risk eight ticks on any trade, okay? And it did eventually get up there into the cycle. And when it did, it did put in a higher swing, but sadly, it stopped us out first. Um, then we got one tick right here. And since then, gold has done absolutely nothing. We picked up one tick right here. And I'm telling you, gold at 11.30, gold is dead on most days. The euro too. Look from 11.30. Uh, it's 11.15. Here's 11.30. This is what the euro did. It's setting up a possible long trade right here. But, I mean, it really didn't do anything all morning. It was really choppy, and it gave one shorting opportunity right here. That went for about eight ticks. Didn't put in a lower swing. Matched the low of the day, and it came up off of that. Um, we did nothing with the euro this morning. Crude. Crude is where we had some action. Um, then I missed most of it because I was answering questions and stuff. Um, let's see. It started out really choppy in here, and there were no trade setups. Then it finally moved, and it gave a down uh, a short right there, a momentum short right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, this is a regular short right here for that leg down. And this one right here is kind of kind of questionable because the cycle's going up pretty steep right there. I probably wouldn't have done that. So I'll just take that to lips off of there. But we did have those two for sure. Um, then it came all the way over here and we had a momentum long right here that went about three ticks. It switched directions and it gave a shorting opportunity right there that I missed. And then it gave another one right here that I picked up 10 ticks on. It gave another one right here that I missed. That was a momentum short. And then it switched directions again. You see how we have higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows. Um, right here, <clears throat> we took five ticks right here out of this. And that was just to get us the goal for the day. I, you know, I probably could have let it run a little longer. Um, obviously, I could have let it run a little longer. But I just wanted to get the goal for the day. And I did. Um, then it got really choppy into the close of the morning session. And let's see, was there anything in here? Not really. It, you know, the way the slingshot's acting down here, we wouldn't have done anything in here. Okay. And the ES. Well, let's look at the ES on a bigger picture here. Because it was working around this weekly trading zone most of the morning. Um, let me back it out. See, it started out right below the zone, right in here. Then it went down. We took a short. We got a break even. Came back up to the zone. Dropped off the zone. Didn't give us a trade opportunity. We got another break even. Came back up to the zone. Almost hit it. Came back down. Gave us another short. We took two ticks. And coming up, I this one right here, I thought it was too close to the to the zone when I saw it. But it was a bounce off the BBC, um, and it went up into the zone. But I thought it was too close to the zone when I originally saw it. That's why I didn't, I didn't act on it. <clears throat> um, but it turns out it was exactly two points to the zone. Um, and after that, we went through the zone. And, yeah, there's... Uh, there might have been a long trade right in here that I missed, but it went all the way up to the next zone right here. And the slingshot's just not giving anything up right there on the long side. And that was the morning session. Now, does anybody have any questions about that? Anybody at all? Okay. 
then I will go back here. And once again, go through this. If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you got to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. A single click it's the fourth day of February, 2019. Made 15 ticks in crude. We lost seven ticks in gold and made two ticks click on and hope you get the price you want. Okay, but put you us at 105 on the morning. Schwab's price and, and yeah, it took us 104 minutes and seven trades to get to that number, 105. Took a total of seven trades. And so far this month, we're at $305 a contract. It's over two days, averaging 152 per day. And on the year, we're at $2,336 per contract. That's over 21 days, averaging $111 per trade. Again, if you want to look at the spreadsheet, <clears throat> you know, we're still early on in the year. You, know, you can look back to last year or the years, all the years before, back to 2013. Um, all the information is in there for you. <clears throat> and if you have not taken the free trial and you want to take the free trial, then go to the homepage at CFRN.net. Over here in the right-hand column, this is five-day free trial, apply to CFRN.net. If you click on that, you will be brought to this page where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Hit that submit button and you'll be sent a confirmation link. Now, <clears throat> you must click on that confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click on that link, we don't know that you took the free trial, so you have to click on that link. Okay. And that is the, th the free trial for the, uh, the mentoring program. Okay, we have a couple of free trials going on right now. That's the one for the mentoring program. Um, and the Logic 24-7 includes the one for the mentoring program. Uh, we just got to know uh, which one you're in <laughs> or uh, you're mostly interested in. Okay, and, and that's it. With that, we can pass it back out to Fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Studio A, I can send you a link. Give me. Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Where Dwayne there we is go. Yeah, where Dwayne is currently residing. Okay. And let me go and see. There we go. John is not in yet. Yeah, how much more to today? Okay. <clears throat> now, as I discussed with everyone this morning in the channel, if we coming coming into the day, <clears throat> the next logical thing was for the market to continue the down leg that began on Friday. We were tracking this a leg and a retracement, a leg, a retracement, a leg that failed to put in a higher high. Hmm. Okay, so now we got to back up and look at it like this leg, retracement. Notice we're going in the other direction now. Leg retracement leg is shallow retracement leg now this leg do we put in a lower low here no hmm so we got <clears throat> our our progress up the chart was stopped by the inability for the market to put in a higher high then as we wind our way down, leg, retracement, leg, retracement, leg, retracement, leg, the swing low here, 26.97, and here, 26.95.50. So again, our inability to put in a lower low here has turned the market back up, just as our inability to put in a higher high right here stop the uptrend dead in its tracks and sent it in the other direction now on the daily we still have an inside day going on and by inside day here's the the high of Friday 
to the lower Friday. And there you go, inside day. So far, we would have to trade above. Mm, Playing, do we lose your volume? No. No, you I did can't not hear you. It says your mic's still on. It is. <clears throat> It really is. Everything's, everything looks like it's supposed to look here, so <clears throat> I don't know why you guys can't hear me. I really don't know. I, we could not hear you. Could not hear a word you were saying. And, and now you can? Now I can. Yes. Okay. Well, because I didn't do anything different. Okay. Huh. Yeah, Daniel, same thing. Okay, we'll just carry on. <clears throat> Okay. Inside candle. In order <clears throat> for this to no longer be an inside day, we need to trade above 27.16 or trade below 26.95.50. So back and forth all day. All right, so back over here. Remember, going into Friday afternoon, we had a leg and a retracement and a leg and a retracement. We failed to put in a higher high. Now, this is on a 30-minute chart. This same principle holds true on a daily chart, on the range chart, whatever chart you might happen to be on, this is what you're looking for, okay? Trading in the direction of the prevailing trend, whatever that happens to be. It's not that you come with some mindset that, oh, this has got to be a down day or this has got to be an up day. Well read the chart and determine what kind of day is it leg and a retracement leg and a retracement fail to put in a higher high you'll hear that all the time in the live training room on the range chart you'll hear it more often there <clears throat> because this dynamic happens more often than on a 30 minute and it happens more often on a 30 minute than it does on a daily See right here, <clears throat> price. Now these are daily candles, so a lot goes on inside a daily candle, just like a lot goes on inside a 30-minute candle. And a leg, and a retracement, and a leg. But you see, the swing high right there is 28, 24 and a quarter. The previous swing high was 28, 31 and a quarter. And then again, swing high was 28, 19 versus 28, 24 and a quarter. There's a leg and a retracement and a leg on the daily chart and a retracement, almost a 100% retracement <clears throat> back to this high, not to this high, but to this one. And then does it put in a lower low? In this case, it does not. But we still put in a lower high so it's going to see so it's trapped in here it's inside it's inside this and this do you see it i'm going to draw it for you
Okay, that helps see a little bit better. Inside. You don't see the chart I have up. I see. It's, you know, it's the enlarged chart, though. It's the daily ESH nine. Yeah, that's that's not. Uh, it says the screen is paused. Who did someone hit that button? We can't hit that button on your chart. No, no, no. On the go to webinar software. I didn't. Somebody hit the pause button, <clears throat> which is probably. I my my button is disabled, so I can't do it. You hit the pause button. No. It's it's disabled unless you have the charts. That button is disabled. Anyway, you can see it now, right? <clears throat> yep, I can see it now. <clears throat> so lay awake tonight, wondering why I would hit that pause button. So here we go. <clears throat> now we've got a leg. We got a lower high. See, this just got. This, this was just inside here. It didn't violate anything because it put in a lower high. If it had put in a higher high than this high, then we would have had to challenge this high <clears throat> and then this high. But it put in a lower low, the retracement, and then put in a substantially lower low. Now we get a leg, a retracement. We were heading down. Leg, retracement, leg. Now moving on up leg retracement leg retracement leg so where are we now right here that's what we're up against <clears throat> below us this is on daily chart but the same thing holds true for a 30 minute a five minute a four tick range bullish cross back on January 14th 11th 14th been a Friday to a Monday <clears throat> or a holiday yeah because there's three days between them okay the bullish cross leg retracement leg now kind of triple top in up here from so now this this helps to better understand looking at this daily Lean in. All right, we talked about over here. Now ah, we're coming up against, you know, Friday's high. Hmm. Why was that Friday's high? Come to think of it, why was it Thursday's high? From the 31st, yep. Now that was, is that the Globex? Hang on. That was 4.30. No, that was going into the close on Thursday. So we have these this high area right up here. which we're in the process of dealing with right now. Third <clears throat> third day in a row <clears throat> on the 30 minute chart that we see these highs of the day and we go, yeah, why is that? Okay, so if we go to a little larger time frame, as always, <clears throat> we can get some kind of an idea what dynamic is going on in the market and why at any given time we may or may not move higher. So, swing low. Swing low. Oh, did I skip the swing high? See? Held it. Held it for a beat. Remember, this is a daily chart. Yeah. 
if you don't see that across there, <clears throat> just go look at a few more charts. Once you've looked at enough, you'll start to see it. Okay. And does price always behave like this when it gets to such an area? Not always, but enough of the time that we consider it to be a high probability. Okay. So we can see this dynamic here we know enough to know that you know after this we got to put in a higher high now we did spike up we did actually we actually close a little bit above it right but then as we did our retracement and tried to put in a higher high we couldn't do it turned us down we tried to put in a lower low couldn't do it it's turning us back down The lower low turned us up, or the failure to make a lower low turned us up, failure to make a higher high, turning us down. How long would that go on? Until it doesn't, <clears throat> until it's resolved, however the market wants to resolve it. Remember, we still have that inside day. Got to get above here or below here. Now, using that same of reasoning where should we find support in here do you see it support 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 for a beat until it wasn't <clears throat> Resistance for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. Eight days, good resistance. Held the market in check until it could pop through this window of opportunity up to the next area overhead. And what do we expect now? Well, price always reverts to the mean. And in this case, the mean is the BBC. And so that's what we anticipate is price pulling back. <coughs> and then attempting see we've put in a higher high there's a high higher high a low a higher low a higher low a higher low that is the definition of an uptrend leg retrace leg retrace leg retrace leg oh see right there we stumbled couldn't put in a higher high but we also didn't put in a lower low and so eventually it turned up. Oh, could that happen here? Sure. If we hold, and that was the discussion in the channel uh, <clears throat> last night or this morning, trading above 2709 and key phrase, holding it on the pullback. In other words, price comes back, <clears throat> it dips below 2709 and then takes off to the upside. Important prices, Important areas are almost always tested here here and it looks like it wants to come back and touch it here what do the indicators say about that well let's have a look hmm just now getting a bullish cross right so over the next three four thirty minute candles would it make sense to see price pull back into this area as as price pulls back now if price starts to go sideways this will continue to rise and they'll meet up possibly right about here okay so we'll be ready for that if it happens now if we get below 2709 and <clears throat> well let me let me back up for just a second I had highlighted this for everyone back on Friday I mean I'm getting ready to get rid of all this so I've walked through it enough times <clears throat> look at the indicators how they were separated Had a nice big move leg and a retracement and a leg yeah and then they tightened up very little separation between them this is the 30 minute chart and then today you know the the slip knot got even tighter right here very very tight 
Now there's an opportunity for some separation. And if that happens, then we would continue the advance up to last week's weekly trading zone at 2735 slash 36. Okay, all right, so let's get rid of all this. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box. If you're on the Logic 247 trial, there will be a Q&A session tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern. The link is in the chat box. So if you want to attend, by all means, uh, click the link and register. Also, if you're not on the trial, but you want to be on the trial, it runs through Wednesday. Send an email to support at cfrn.net. And in the subject line, uh, just put alert trial. A little dab will do you. John just popped in. Um, Very good. And the link, did you just post a link? Mm, not or was it the one you posted earlier? I posted it earlier. Okay, I'll repost it for you. Okay, thanks. Right now. Uh, this one. Hey, okay. John, welcome to the show. Okay. Oh, hi. Was, hi. There you uh, are. There you are. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether we break out above this 2715 level. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, here's what it looks like on the daily uh, right here. Yeah, it, it looks pretty strong, but uh, the, the VIX is starting to go up off the lows, which, um, you know, can sometimes mean that there's trouble ahead. It doesn't have to be, next, you know, later today or tomorrow, but it could be by Wednesday. And sometimes, you know, the State of the Union market tends to rally into the State of the Union and possibly peak shortly thereafter. Uh, Although, you know, you, 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 you're coming off such a huge January, you have to kind of give the market the room to, to move higher, uh, given that we're in, I mean, it's the biggest move up in 30 years or something. So it, it's nothing to sneeze at. And uh, <coughs> the, the market, just the, just the performance of the market this morning, the uh, the Dow is not doing a whole lot, but the Nasdaq is very strong today. The Nasdaq uh, was the early pop to the upside. Yeah, and obviously that's a good thing. But you know, we're we're starting to get up to levels that might, you know, co 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 be cause for a pullback. And uh, if, if Boeing, this, Boeing if this is really another well. if this is another <coughs> lower high, John, we had, we, had a, we had a high here. Mm -hmm. We had a high here. We had a lower high here. A lower high mm -hmm. here, and a lower mm -hmm. high high here. And if this turns out to be a lower high, this thing, uh, well, yeah, um, and you know, I don't, yeah. I don't doubt. I mean, it, it could be a real, you know, it, it could be a devastating move to the downside. And you know, there's a, several things that could make that happen. There's, I mean, right now we've had a bit of a pullback <coughs> in the gold and silver, and. The, a friend of mine who's pretty smart, uh, he, he, I think he has an IQ of about 185, <laughs> which, wow. which is uh, unusual. Yeah, and that, uh, that is he, unusual. He, he told me before the weekend, he thought the goal would come down to 1313 on the April, and that's exactly where it came off. And uh, he thinks it might get back to 1323 today, and I guess if it does take 1319, 20, it, it's got a shot at doing that. The gold is acting pretty uh, pretty well uh, you know in spite of the pullback and I would suggest I would say that if if we get another leg up here in the gold if it, if we've got to go a little bit higher to really you know s nail nail it um, probably 1325 or 1323 might be a little number 16 on the silver and uh, get this the platinum back about 8, 825 or so 825 830 the palladium is already inspired uh, this was an amazing thing you know you had this big hit in palladium last week and it's already recovered uh, you know half of its more than half its loss the copper also is right back to the highs that's a really positive thing so the and uh, the the grains you got to keep an eye on these grains because 
for some reason they're not buying China's offer to buy five million tons uh, yet uh, but um, uh, that could change so if there's any kind of a, a strong buying in the in the grains coming off where we are right now I'd say you want to hop on board that move also sugar is moving higher today it looks uh, like it's breaking out to the upside which is an inflationary counter as, as it are the beans and the silver when you get the three S's going up it's usually a good good sign for the inflation counter the uh, I just took a look at BHP and Rio which are the you know the the bluest of blue chip kind of gold there's BHP stocks. on a daily right look at it I mean it looks like it's about to break out big time to the upside I mean, it's going to make new 52 week highs here uh, any minute and that uh, and, and there's you know a lot the measured move on that is really big you know could you could you could see BHP going up to 100 from here maybe over the next year or so um, and uh, I mean look at it. it looks really really impressive uh, and it's been building a lot of value up here at the uh, kind of looks uh, like Walmart did about 10 or 10 years ago or maybe 15 years ago before it it, it was held back at the 50 level for a long time and then suddenly it broke out and you know it's been way up since then ever since then kind of looks like the same for BHP and Rio and uh, these are uh, you know the, the, these are the the, the the bellwethers of the of the whole mining sector Royal Gold is acting extremely well RGLD uh, right now there it is <clears throat> it's going up with authority you see that break out there uh, listen it's not far uh, even though it got knocked down uh, from the nearly 100 back to 70 it's it's almost back to 90 and it's not not far from making new all-time highs new all-time highs for royal gold that's really uh, potentially very very bullish yeah I can, I can definitely um, see this going higher yeah yeah so uh, and the, um, the the you know this this is a stock that could really go dramatic so there's something coming I don't know whether it's the banks the European banks the the, the deficit where we talk about 22 trillion uh, there's something out there that might just it feels to me like we're we're go there's gonna be a runaway move to the upside on the metals fairly soon and you know look we've just made twenty dollars on the nugget and UGT uh, and look the platinum looks like I, I mean jeepers you know this platinum could be up to a thousand before you know it uh, <coughs> it's got a huge downtrend line that's close to breaking and uh, it's I mean it's got to really you know it's got to go up with some authority here it's got to break out but I think once it starts a breakout it, it could really move up a lot <coughs> you can see that it, at one time it was the most uh, in fact isn't it weird look uh, we made new all-time highs in the platinum back in 09 uh, and 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 so we had a negative divergence in 2011 when gold went a new high went to a new high and platinum did it didn't uh, so I was a uh, so so you know you're dealing with a monster kind of situation here where platinum could uh, could could possibly follow palladium and uh, and uh, you know become a monster mover to the upside the whole new you know could go to new all-time eyes <coughs> <coughs> which would be incredibly bullish so yes, um, <clears throat> the uh, it's definitely feels like there's something really big brewing in the metals and um, you know it, it could be market and metals going up together the dollar unfortunately has popped back up today but it's not doesn't seem to be phasing the gold too much um, if you can put up the nugget there during sure. and UG, sorry sorry I know you had it but it was no, the longer in you in UGT okay 
There you go. That's on a daily. How you want it? And we just lost John, I think. It, it really looks like that, that nugget could could uh, could rock higher here. It looks like a little one-two, and then we could go into some kind of a third way that takes us up to 30, 30 or more. That feels like it's right around the corner. So what do you think the something could be? Do you think uh, if, we, if, if Trump declares the state of emergency, do you think that's what might trigger it? You know what? That's, an, that's a good point. Could could do. Is that yeah. what the market's waiting on, or is it waiting, or is it just simply waiting on the state of the onion tomorrow night? Um, it's probably rallying into that right now. I mean, to be doing this well at the beginning of the week is not a bad place to be. Uh, but you know, not everything is. Uh, while the tech is good today, the, the the semis are kind of not going anywhere. It feels to me. Um, I think you just have to take it day by day, but right now the market, I mean, I think the market, especially the tech performance this morning was pretty impressive. Oh yeah, and come in uh, right at the 9.30 bell, uh, at the beginning of the day session, uh, the NQ was the first one to take the run to the upside, and so far it's just kept going. Yeah, and, and um, you know, uh, in uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon rebounding was probably part of it, and uh, Facebook has been acting really strong too. So, um, and, and a lot of the drug stocks are acting better today. Too. Alphabet yeah, the, reports the, after the bell today. Yeah, and 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 probably you know you, you know it, you know it, it's probably going to do well. So, um, if if not, then we know why the VIX was going up right now so we'll see uh, alphabet they get well this is daily so no yeah they're right up against resistance here mm -hmm. we'll see if they can get through that mm -hmm. what were you gonna say yeah, there's like there's like a bit of a gap there too where it kind of got filled before but still an area where if it would get over 1150 i mean obviously if alpha mm -hmm. does does do well and look look at the upside look at the upside gap off the 1100 area doing see that over here no no uh, yeah, yeah down no no down down the, the where where this one? The, the, yeah from 1100 from 1100 here 1100. you know i mean it, this thing this looks like a kind of a mid a, a mid consolidation ahead of a possible run up to 1175 or 1200 or even 1250 uh, there's no question if if they beat uh, this stock will, will go probably go up a lot I mean you know, there's money for all rope for this company they make so much money off of things that are just getting bigger and bigger white space. A, a, they make their money off white space yeah, search and and YouTube and everything like this. It's all, it's all money for old rope, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, their 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 various and then the phone business too, and all these things. You know, they're in they're in a pretty good. It would be surprised if they don't. You know, given there's three hundred thousand new jobs every you know average every month now, and three percent growth. It it would be kind of a surprise if they miss right. so uh, back yeah. up, we're up and the, that the, other, the other right thing here. is the you know you've got this brexit issue too which is looming out there you know possible upset in the government over in england i mean you know after all that all the dra drama of the pound going higher last week it's back down almost back down to 130 again which is not not very good performance uh, and uh, so i have to see but obviously if the if this is just a pull but if this is just a pullback and, and look the gold while we're speaking the gold's kind of pushing pushing 1319 now and uh the um the, the gold stocks in general acting really well 
so um it's 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 gonna something something out there is uh, is coming by the looks of it you, you know also the the deal with china is getting closer and closer it's only a month away now potentially so um less than a month and if they can pull that off that's probably going to be very bullish for the metals as well You know, China is really amazing. There was, there's a, a couple of interesting um, YouTube or, uh, documentaries out there about how in just like a little, little more than a decade, China has gone from, you know, having less high-speed rail than almost any other country to having, having more high-speed rail than the rest of the world combined. And there's nothing short of staggering what they've done. And, and who utilizes this high-speed rail? Is it the common well, workers, 1. the middle 4 class? Billion, 1.4 billion people who, who you know, who use and utilize it. I mean, they've got the, they got the population, and it's. I mean, I don't think they would really be building these as much as they've done. I mean, this is like state of the art modern rail infrastructure, like nothing ever done before, um, and it's it's just it's mind boggling what they've accomplished. No wonder they're using more iron, you know, iron than anybody on the planet and, and resources in general. China Railway. This isn't it? One of the Google articles is, sorry, one of the YouTube articles is just, you know, how, how, why, why, uh, China has so much high-speed rail, and uh, it's a heck of a story. You know, we all grew up with this uh, picture, this mental picture of <clears throat> what it meant to be uh, a Chinese citizen, and that was out working in a field or in a, in a rice paddy or wherever, it, right? Am I right? <laughs> not, not men and women in business suits taking a high-speed rail from one town to another. I mean, that's, I'm just saying, that's, that's the image well, from, from that, that one, we grew from up on. One mega, from one megatropolis to another, because I think there, there's over 100 cities in China with a population of more than 10 million, uh, maybe even 300, uh, no, 10, 10 uh, no, it's, a, it's 100, about 100, uh, something like that. Um, it's, uh, it's staggering. Here's a, um, these guys are celebrating, they just completed a 1,000 over 1,000 meter tunnel along the China Laos Railway. Hmm. You know, and that's, they want to, they want to, the next thing they're going to do, which will be a game changer, is uh, continuing the, the, you know, the, the Silk Road, laying high speed rail right through to Europe. I mean, they've got rail links right now. In fact, the fastest way to get goods from china is actually by rail through through, through directly to germany through the, through all these different countries but if they can get that as a high speed rail route that that will be uh, that will be a pretty rapid uh, <clears throat> that that looks pretty uh <clears throat> futuristic doesn't it mhm mm mhm mm going to load yeah so uh, this is from september of 2017 china railway is hopeful to hit 2017 contract target despite drop in over oh china oh they they manufacture these for other people mm -hmm. okay so i was trying to drill down to the chinese railroad Is that what it's called, John? What's it called? I think they call it railways, railways over in China. Or high speed rail. High rail speed rail. transport. Yeah, there. Why is China so good at high speed rail? I think that's the article. So good at building. Yeah. That's all.
you know, they, they compare it to to like Perth, Adelaide, and and different routes. Right. See, that's that's what they started off. To, you know, that's all they added like fifteen years ago, something like that. Now they got more than anybody. If you go to the end of the thing, it'll it'll show all the all the rails across China. Are the ghost are the ghost cities uh, still empty? Um, there, there you go. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Staggering. <laughs> Sixteen thousand seven hundred miles. <clears throat> now, people who live in China are they free to travel anywhere they want to inside of mainland you know, China? Yeah, pretty much. I okay. think. Uh, um, it's amazing what they've done. Check out, check out that aerial thing there most expensive private jets is that, is that <laughs> yeah that caught my eye too i think that's uh i think that's make well, i thought it was a blimp or something or that's something what it looked kind of like uh yeah i don't think there's any it's yeah that that was just uh that was to just get you to click on it some right. eye candy to get yeah and we did so there you go yeah. it worked yeah. Anything else you want to cover? No, listen, thanks very much for the invite. Right, and uh, have a great afternoon. Thanks very much. All right, again. have a great Bye. Monday. Talk to you tomorrow. All right, All right guys, on crude. <clears throat> Got a little double top going on up here. Got a bearish cross. Just moved to the downside. This is a 30-minute chart. Took us from 54.90. Oh, down to 53.30. Now price has pulled back. This area here has the potential to provide us with a, another leg to the downside. Will it put in a lower low and commence a trend of the downside? I don't know. I do know that it's a high probability that the market will attempt a move lower here. Where might it get stymied right about there? And so this becomes what I like to call a window of opportunity. <clears throat> All right, back to the S&P. Consider being long at or above 2709. Swing high so far, 2714 and a quarter. But we know what we're dealing with. And back to the daily real quick. Is it still an inside day? Why, yes, it is so far. Day's not over yet. On the down. All right. Last night, concierge trade alerts for the down. Stand by. If you want to grab a screenshot, hang tight, and I'll drag it up there, and you can do it. Okay, here we go. And there you are. Okay. Now, upside for the Dow was 250.50, and the swing high so far is 250.49. to the long side. <clears throat> On the short side, it was 24,900, which never triggered. On the Russell. Okay. All right. On the Russell... <clears throat> 1510 to the upside. There we go. And swing high so far, 
On the downside, 1494, no trigger yet. In Q. Early leader to the upside this morning, consider being long 68.95 and above. 68.95. Some of those come out. 6.45. Yeah. 68.95. Okay. Or 68.95 ish. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. We hit it. We almost hit it. And this time we ripped through it. But not only did we ripped through it, <clears throat> you got to you got to think about this for just a second. Okay, the number 68.95. Tested it. Spiked it, couldn't get a toe hole. Back, came again, back. This time, not only did we move through it, but we held it on a pullback. Can you see that? This candle ran up to here, closed here. This candle opened here. It pulled back to the trigger, the swing low was 68, 92.75. <clears throat> And then off it went. Leg, retrace, leg. Just like that. Same things over and over again. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. And on the downside was 68.35, no trigger down there. Crude. Consider being long. At or above 55.80. And the swing high so far 55.75. So you're being short at or below 54.60. That's right there. Right where we are right now. Fifty-four sixty. Swing low. 53.30. Now from 54.60, from 54.60 to 53.60, which is right about there, 53.60. That is a $1,000 from there to there. That's $1,000 per contract traded. Now let's look at this a little bit closer. Yes? No, nothing. I'm just watching. Okay. I'm just watching. Oh, I thought you had a question. Nope. So from there, <clears throat> 55, 20, <clears throat> down to 54, 60. I want you to look at, at this here. Start closing below these lows. We trigger red and fallen. Red and fallen. When the step line crosses the CFMA1, not here because it hasn't crossed yet, but here, when you get a on a short trade, on a on a down move, when the step line crosses the CFMA1, and you get a green close above the step line that's your exit signal does the exit signal get you out at the swing low no 
nothing it does except blind luck because well <clears throat> you don't know it's the swing low or the swing high till after the fact true story you cannot know the future any more than you can change the past that's the reality and the moment a trader accepts that truth that fundamental truth and begins to trade within those confines you position yourself to become the one out of ten because we know nine out of ten don't make it I didn't originate that thought that was originated in futures magazine many many years ago and for the most part it remains true for most traders what makes the difference are those traders the one out of ten who actually has someone to teach them because nine out of ten wing it on their own or jump from one place and one thing to another until there's no more money to jump with and then it's back to the grind until another nest egg gets saved up and then eh, let's try that again or you can learn to wait for the high probability move the high probability trade setup like this doesn't mean you're always going to be right but if you only take trades that have a high probability of moving in the direction that the trade suggests <clears throat> longer short that alone how how would that change your outcome daily weekly monthly quarterly it doesn't matter what measuring stick you use that's the deal think about that okay now that did I need some special computer slide rule all that you know some arcane knowledge that price would potentially run into some static here some resistance and attempt to move lower well, you might say well it hasn't moved a lot lower no it hasn't but it has ground to a halt and I do believe that's a red candle it's the beginning of a red candle you all got to start somewhere right <clears throat> so do we think this will go to test the low and ultimately put in a new low ah, that's above my pay grade it's a high probability though that it come back to test this area here well what if it doesn't then it then it doesn't you follow me remember it's as impossible to know the future as it is to change the past that's the reality and so every every dime every dollar every hour that you spend investing in things that claim to know the future you're exiling yourself into the land of nine out of ten let the truth set you free and the truth is free got to find somebody to teach it to you that's all if you want to come to the webinar tomorrow please do it's a Q&A session it will really only kind of make sense to those who are on the trial so if you're not on the 24 7 e-mini alert trial also known as logic 247 where opportunity finds you if you're not a part of that world yet <clears throat> well get cracking send an email to support at CFRN Dot net and in the subject line just put alert trial please okay and there you have it okay uh, Kevin you had a question I see it now how close would you follow with your stop on that crude example well talk about right here well <clears throat> Currently, price is fifty-four forty-nine. So fifty-four sixty-nine on a thirty-minute chart puts you above this swing high. So 
if this is going to hold, as we say, so price is currently at 54.47, so 67, if you went 67, that's uh, 20 cents, $10 a tick, $200 per contract available. That's one way, one method. If you sign up for a mentoring session, uh, Kevin, I'll help you with those. And also make sure that Valerie has sent you, and I'm sure she has, and that you've watched them, <clears throat> how to set your stop losses. That's for both the concierge trade alerts and for the Logic 247. Principle is the same, okay? All right. Thank you for your question. Still an inside day. As long as this high is higher than this high. As long as this high. 27.16. So we still need to trade up to there. Right there. That will challenge the inside day. <clears throat> okay, so that help you, Kevin? You good with that? Okay. All right. Last week on Friday, <clears throat> we talked about receiving from God. Today, well, we're going to talk about Hey, you're going to kick out of this. What to do when someone irritates you? Be kind to one another. Tender-hearted. Ephesians 4.32 Some of us excel in our careers, but act carelessly casually, and sometimes even caustically when it comes to our relationships. Then we rationalize it by saying, well, I didn't mean any harm, or, well, well that's, that's just my way. <laughs> well, sorry, God doesn't let us off the hook that easily. When someone irritates us, God requires us to do two things. Get a pen. Be the first to reach out. You may be right, but if you're resentful, what good is it? Instead of nursing a grudge or waiting for the other person to apologize, be the first to reach out. Someone else's response neither validates nor invalidates your decision to forgive. Think about it. If you only had a year to live, would you give such things another second of your time? No. Again, the Bible says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 God made the first move in forgiving us so that we know how to do it for others. Number two, remember he requires two things. Here's the second thing, be understanding. When some of us argue our point, we bulldoze everybody and everything in our way. Purpose-driven, time-conscious, goal-oriented people can even be guilty of this. Chances are the people who get under your skin, they really aren't trying to complicate your life. They're struggling to cope with their own. Once you understand that there's no ill will intended, you begin to feel compassion for them. That's how it is with God. Isaiah 42, 3. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. So today, ask him to help you show his love, not your love, his love, towards those who irritate you. And pretty soon you'll go along for the ride.
Fair enough. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, good, Kevin. I'm glad that helped. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. See you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading E-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision.